Making it hard trying to figure who's out to trap me. Pataki got all kinds of undercovers that's coming at me. Perhaps he won't be happy till they snatch me and place me with half a slack speed sitting in Kazaki. But now yeah, as y'all can see, the Talking That Walk series is starting to fucking pop. Facts. Know what I mean? Salute, salute, salute. Welcome to the 13th episode of that Talking That Walk series. Let me start off by saying this is probably the first time that I'm putting out two Talking That Walk series episodes in one week. I just put one out a couple of days ago about a CO that got his head blown off. You know what I mean? This one right here is about another prisoner that I unfortunately had to take care of in that regard. You know what I mean? Um, I'm going to get into that, into that story. You know what I mean? As y'all can see in the title, over a cool G rap versus Scarface debate. Taking it back to 1995 in Kaksaki Correctional Facility, where a lot of stupid shit happens. And this story right here is one of them stupid shit kind of stories. You know what I mean? Um, but 1995 is literally 29 years ago when motherfuckers was younger. You know what I mean? Me personally, when this happened, I was 20 years old. I'm in my 40s now. Late 40s. But anyway, um, before I get into that story, let me first say this. You know what I mean? Um, I have a, a podcast called The Bar Clay Series. Um, basically, it's presented by the Bro King Price. You know what I mean? On um, the Barclays series, this is for all you rappers. You know what I mean? You will see a player behind me as I'm speaking this story right here. You'll see a player behind me. But um, basically, if you're a rapper, you want to get your shit off, you know what I mean? Be on YouTube, get a video, um, holla at me. You know what I'm saying? My Instagram page. T-Bone Blast 2020. Holla at me. I get you connected to this platform called the Ball Clay Series. Go on YouTube. Type in Millionaire Minded Music Group. And then go to the playlist Ball Clay Series. And you're going to see videos featuring different rappers spitting freestyles. If you want to be a part of that, like I said, holla at me. T-Bone Blast 2020 on Instagram. And I'm going to get you connected. Salute to the boy King Price. You know what I mean? That's something that, you know, he came up with. And um, I'm going to assist him in accumulating rappers to be on that platform because I think it's dope. Really dope. So tap in and um, see for yourself. Um, But anyway, let's get to the story. This story... You know, hip hop, hip hop debates go on forever. Um, people debate all the time about Tupac versus Biggie, Jay Z versus Nas. In this day and age, Kendrick Lamar versus um Drake. Um, and people be real passionate about their argument, whatever rapper they decide to argue on behalf of. Um, that shit did not just stop. Like I said, I'm taking you back to 1995 to Kaksaki Correctional Facility where an argument of such then led to bloodshed. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't exactly say that that bloodshed directly came from this argument. Or this debate. You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell a story. And then I'm going to let y'all decide. And I'm going to also tell y'all the reason why I titled it. What I titled it. Um, but anyway. Going back to 1995. 
I'm in Kaksaki prison. Kaksaki is mostly comprised of adolescents. Um, it's a maximum correctional facility. And, you know, it's a lot of young dudes that got a lot of time. Me personally, when I was there, I didn't have a lot of time. But I was there because I was getting in all kinds of shit in prison. You know what I mean? A couple of slashes here and there. So I found myself in a maximum security prison. But I was an adolescent myself and I was with the shits. You know what I mean? So it didn't bother me, not one bit. But anyway, 1995, Kaksaki. If you know, you know. Brooklyn was fucking deep. Brooklyn was deep. I mean, um, it's probably like one of the deepest jails as, in regards to Brooklyn that I've been to in all my years in prison. Not only was dudes deep, but dudes kind of fucked with each other. You know what I mean? Normally in the Brooklyn crews, the Brooklyn cliques, it's always a Brooklyn clique wherever jail you go to. You know what I mean? Bronx clicks, that's dead. Harlem clicks, that's dead. Staten Island, Queens, that's dead. Majority of them turned gang members. So they kind of like demolish themselves. You know what I mean? Um, Brooklyn is the one geographical click that kind of still exists. You know what I mean? In the state. Because while you do got a lot of Brooklyn dudes that went to the gangs, it's a lot of Brooklyn dudes that, nah, we ain't doing that. Like, we some cocky motherfuckers, boy. Like, real shit. Like, a lot of dudes in Brooklyn frown upon that shit. Like, you join the gang? Like, really? But anyway, Kaksaki, 1995. I was there. They had the boy Fangs, Rob Bills. I just saw Rob Bills today from out of Brownville. Um, You had... um. Light skin Miz and Black Sea stayed on a pull up bar. You had, um, who else you had? See, I should have never started naming names because now I fuck around and gotta probably name everybody because I don't want nobody to feel slighted. But Brooklyn was in the building. You had Fort Green K. Bourne. You had Sha Boogie from Brownsville. You had, um, who else was there? Smart Boy Slave from out of Howard. Um, Damn, damn, damn. It was like Brooklyn was so, you had the back of the days born son, you know what I mean? The bro homo came through there, but he kind of came through there as I was leaving, like after this incident that I'm about to tell y'all about. Um, Brooklyn was just so deep, you know what I mean? But it was layers in that shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we, for the most part, we fucked with each other, but in a way, we didn't, as far as like, Within that Brooklyn team, you got individual cliques. Like, you from Brooklyn, we gonna ride together, but I, you know, this is my guy right here. He from Brooklyn too, but me and him know each other from the street. You know what I'm saying? So, shit be broken off like that. Damn, I'm missing so many names because Brooklyn, you had Edo from out of Albany Projects. Like, it was, it's, it, Brooklyn was just so deep. 1995, Kaksaki was a different fucking hit. You know what I mean? Straight jacket. You know what I mean? So, but even though we was all one, sometimes, you know, minor disputes occur. You know what I mean? Such as this one. And it kind of got out of hand. I deem it a, a, a shooting that shouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? I fired a shot on another Brooklyn dude, you know what I mean? But like I said, it's layers to this shit because you got immediate peoples and you got peoples. And, you know, he was a Brooklyn dude, but he wasn't a dude that he was, you know, Brooklyn. But like I said earlier, everybody got their own little individual team within the Brooklyn clique, and he wasn't on my team. Um, this guy right here throughout the story, I'm going to call him R. You know what I mean? But it's a lot of people that knows the story. He might even get wind of this story and listen to it and everything. But um, I'm not going to call his name because this is, like I said, it's damn near 30 years ago. And, you know, I don't know what type of life he living. I don't want to disrupt it with no, you know, just trying to belittle him or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But I'm telling a story. You know what I mean? And 
it's going to be, a, it's a story that's just going to be real, all the way real, you know what I mean? But I will admit that it's a shooting, one of my shootings that, you know, that could have went a different way if I had the mind state that I have now, you know what I mean? Um, you see the title, it says, you know, over a debate in regards to Cool G Rap versus Scarface. Cool G Rap was a hardcore rapper, but he put flamboyance in his shit. Scarface, a hardcore rapper, but he put a lot of horror in his shit. Me, I preferred the Cool G Rap kind of hardcore. He talked about getting money. You know what I mean? That been my guy. In 1995, Cool G Rap had a tape called, uh, what was the name of this tape? 456. That was the name of the tape, like CeeLo 456. And I couldn't stop listening to that shit. That was my shit. You know what I mean? Um, cool G Rap is probably one of the most underrated rappers in regards to main, in the mainstream world in the history of rap. You know what I mean? To me, he was the best storyteller. You know what I mean? He did his props as far as the underground circuit. How many rappers from Styles P on, and you could just name them, Nas, they always mention G-Rap. G-Rap was my guy too, but Scarface wasn't no slouch either. You know what I mean? Scarface got bars. Scarface got a song with um, Beanie Siegel. You know what I mean? Where they just going back and forth and Scarface was going crazy. You know what I mean? Um, so Scarface is definitely not no slouch, but G-Rap out of those two was my guy. You know what I mean? Um, the name of the title, the name of this story is what it is. I see the title, but I'm still not sure if I, I named it that because, you know, that's what everybody say that this shooting was over. But really it wasn't, but I'm going to tell a story and let y'all determine if it was or wasn't over that Cool G Rap Scarface debate. Here's how it went. Now, the kid R, like I said, I'm going to call him R. Um... He was a dude that I knew from DFY. I met him through this kid from around his way named Hassan. Rest in peace, Hassan. Hassan was my little man in Sparfit and shit. And so when I went up to upstate to the juvenile joint, a joint called Camp Brace, Hassan was there. And I remember he introduced me to this kid. Oh, he knew him from the town. You know, um, he was from Coney Island. And you know me from Brownsville, so. Like I said, but I met Hassan, Sparfit. He's my little man. And um, rest in peace, Hassan. But anyway, see him embrace. He introduced me to this guy, whatever. Uh, um, but we we was in different units, so I ain't really see much of all, but I knew who he was, because them two used to stick together because they was cool from the street. Um so years later, when I seen R uh, in Sparfit, I mean on Rikers Island in the four building, I already knew who he was. We was, we wasn't people. We was cordial. We was all right. Mm, salute. What's up? That's it. Pretty much. Um, so from Rikers Island, we end up in Kaksaki together. And we end up on the same gallery. Now, like I said, Kaksaki was flooded with Brooklyn duels. How can I forget my boy Kareem, one half of the Batman Robin duo? You know that infamous duo? Shooting up shit. That duo from Brownville. Yeah. My boy Robin. You know what I mean? He was in the building. Spoonie was in the building. We were always in the same gallery. Spoonie from up the hill. Um, Brooklyn was deep. As I tell the story, probably more names gonna come in my head or whatever the case. You know what I mean? But we was deep. You know what I mean? Um, but we was on this gallery, I think it was C1. You know, Kaksaki is comprised of it's, it's A block, B block. It's from A block all the way to F block. I don't know how it is now, but A, B, C, D block was regular population. 
E block was keep lock, F block was long term keep lock. You know what I mean? That's how they had it back then. So I was in C block when this incident that I'm about to tell y'all about occurred. And um, the kid R was in C block. Not only was we in the same block, but we was on the same gallery. We was only like three cells away from each other. And we was cool, you know what I mean? Brooklyn boy, you know what I mean? I take that Brooklyn shit very seriously, you know what I mean? And um, some was good money. Um, Never heard no bad shit about him, no fucked up shit about him or nothing like that. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, it really, this was going to fuck a lot of people up. Because the Scarface versus Cool G rap story, the name, like, people saying this over that went out so crazy as that that what I'm about to say is going to fuck those people up because those people don't know that this kind of started brewing before that. Me and the kid, oh, I was a decent basketball player. I was decent, a decent basketball player, but he, I guess he felt he was not, like I said, he was in DFY with me. There was certain things he could do that I can't do, you know what I mean? So he felt like he could fuck with me on a basketball court. This is where the shit really, you know what I mean? Me and him played, like we was in the yard one day. I don't remember how the conversation came up, but we started betting for like five soaps a game. You know what I mean? Five literally bars of soap a game. We in prison. So tone soap, Irish spring, all that shit, you know, that's money. Fuck it. So, but it was supposed to be a friendly game. Game was five. I do remember that. And I must have beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him to the point where he was owing me like 30 something bars of soap. 30, 35 bars of soap. Um, the last game, he was winning before they called the yard to go back. Um,. So he was trying to, when we got back, he was like, no, I was gambling my money back. Yo, bro, where my soaps at? Fuck all that. We ain't finished that game. You was winning, but you was winning some of the other games too. And I came back and bust your ass. Like, I'm not an elite player, neither is he. But I hold my own on that court. You know what I mean? I will bust your ass. If you if you slack, I'm going to bust your ass. Like, I, you know, I got the fundamentals all. Like, even back then, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But um, he thought it was something sweet. And we went back inside with him owing me like 30 bars of soap. You know what I mean? And we playing like game fives and shit. Bullshit, people shit. At least that's what I thought it was. So he trying to argue about that last game to the point where I was like, you know what? Don't even worry about that five bars of soap. I'm going to give you that game. What about the rest? Still was like 30 bars. You know what I mean? I don't remember the exact number. But I know I had him up there. And um, the real reason why he was arguing about that one bullshit game it's because he only had like about, I don't know what he had, but he gave me nine bars of soaps and that's all he had. Really? You was the main one talking all this shit about you or bust my ass on the court. Because you thought it was something sweet. And you only got, so you was ass bad. You was trying to win your money back. But like I said, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, he from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? And even though we wasn't in the same circle within Brooklyn, he's from Brooklyn. And I know him from juvenile, from the juvenile days. So I right, commissary come. I mean, you know, when you get commissary, you get the rest of my shit because I want my shit. But anyway, I felt some kind of way because he has better me. He knew he, I, I was able to cover whatever I would have lost. You know what I'm saying? You knew you ain't have that, but you were so fixated on beating me in ball that you just kept going and going and going and going. But I really felt some way about that shit. But it wasn't enough to shoot. I wasn't thinking about clapping him. I wasn't thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, oh, he just got, he had me tight a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Not even a week pass. Now you got my boy Robin, Kareem. His cell is literally directly in front of my cell. I don't know where this argument sparked from. I don't know how it started, but all I know is I found myself engaged in uh, Scarface versus Cool G Rap debate. A couple of people that that's in our section, you know, where the sales is at, because we locked in. 
you know, I heard Taxaki, they keep them on quiet time now, but back then we, you know, we was able to get crazy on the gate. So, you know, we all young, we talking about who you think is better, Scarface or Cool G Rap? Who you think is better? So, you know, Cool G Rap is my guy. I'm G rapping it. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, a couple people, I'm not, I don't remember what my boy Robin said, but that's not even the importance of this story. Um, but we, I'm debating with somebody explaining why G rap is better. And all of a sudden the dude, all oh, come out of nowhere, calls that person and say, Scarface is better. Now, I don't mind him having an opinion about Scarface being better. This is why I say, I'm going to let y'all determine if it was over Scarface or G-Rap. If, if the shooting was really over that. From the outside looking in, that's how it looks. But really, I really don't mind. This is what happened. I'm still feeling the way about the motherfucker. Like, you really, because we outside, we was playing that game. Every game, I'm like, yo, bro, you got my soaps, right? You got them, right? You know what I mean? But it wasn't enough to clap them. I just wasn't fucking with them at that moment. I was feeling away. So it was kind of too soon for you to just be like, it's a couple of people talking about this shit, the debate, but for the most part, it seemed like he zeroed in on my, on me because I'm talking about, I'm talking to somebody. He called that person. It was like, yo, Scarface is better. So I was like, yo, bro, who the fuck talking to you? Nobody even, nobody talking to you. Oh, Scarface is better. Like I said, Scarface is better. <laughs> so now I'm feeling like you really try to fuck with me now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, oh, who the fuck you think you talking to? I'm talking to you. Bro, really? I'm really feeling the way. I sh when I think back on it now, I shouldn't have been feeling the way. It wasn't that serious. But back then, I was feeling away. And now that I already said, who the fuck you think you talking to? I kind of opened the doors for him to say, this shit, he talking to you. Fuck you mean who you think I'm talking to? And that's how shit started going back and forth. To the point where I was like, you going to the yard? Because they had just, I left this part out. They had just, it was a, a we in C block, the CO. It was a female named Mrs. C. Crazy. Mrs. C. And we in C block. But that was her name. Mrs. C. Literally. Um, she had already took the yard list. They always do chow and law. And I'm one of them type of people where even if I don't think I'm going to chow, even if I don't think I'm going to yard, for the most part, I always put it down when they walk by just in case I change my mind at the last minute. This is one of them days I did that because it was raining outside that day. So a lot of people probably wasn't going to the yard. So, but I shot the Adam. Yo, you going to the yard? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Robin, his cell was in front of me. He seen where it was going. He was like, son, chill, son. Chill. You know what I mean? But I already felt like son tried to show me up on the gate. So he, Robin kind of was talking me down. Mind you. Asked him if he going to the yard. The CEO had already took the list. I put down. He must have not put down, but he didn't really respond. So Rob was like, yo, so leave that shit alone. That shit ain't about nut, man. Ah. So he was kind of talking me down. I wasn't thinking about it. All of a sudden, all comes out. Yo, Miss C. Miss C. Yo, can you put me down for the yard? He don't know that I'm Rob talking me down. I wasn't really, I was trying to, you know what I mean? But he just had to say that. Rob looked at me, I looked at him. I think Rob knew what it was, but he still, but it wasn't nothing he could tell me at that point. So what really made it crazy, Miss C, you know, she talking shit. I already took the list. If you ain't put down when I, but Miss C was cool. So it's a chance, you, some CEOs, you, whatever you put down, that's what it is. If you don't put down, that's, you ain't going, you ain't going. But Miss C was all right. So you can get her to change the list. But she's still going to talk her shit. You know what I mean? She was like, yo, you ain't put down the, you ain't put down when, when I said, you know what I mean? When I took the list, that's a wrap. You know, pretty much that's what she was saying. He like, please, Miss she put me down for yard. I'm like, oh, man. 
And anybody that heard that little exchange before that, or when we was talking about the G rap and Scarface, was hearing this. I wasn't feeling that shit. I'm going to knock your top off when this motherfucker said, you better hope she don't put you down for rap. But she never said she was. She never said she wasn't. A little bit later, maybe like an you know, hour later or whatever, they called the yard. They opened it up to sales. I come out ratchet in hand. I'm ready for action. He comes out. When he come out, he kind of fucked me up because he was like, yo, so you be on some bullshit, son. You be on some bullshit, son. Like, tap me on my shoulder. He ain't have nothing in his hand because, you know, I zeroed in on it. I had something in my son. You be on some bullshit. And I almost went for that shit. I ain't even going to lie. I was like, because Robin came out too for rap. I'm looking at this shit like, all that for this? But as we start walking down the hallway, it hit me like, hold up. You trying to do that on a low after you just tried to style on me on the gate? Rob thought it was over. And I'm thinking about this shit on the way to yard. So it was another house in front of us. So we had to wait in the hallway. And so they got searched because Kaksaki, you got to show your ID card. Everybody got to walk through the metal detector because Kaksaki was crazy. You know what I mean? So while we waiting for the other house, this shit is like, re the whole shit is like replaying in my mind. And I'm like, I can let this shit go. But nah, nah, he tried to stab on me, man. Fuck all that. Like, he should have said that on the gate. The same thing he said when we came out, that's what he should have said when we was in ourselves. Like, you just try to just... And... I blazed him. We was on the line waiting, right in the hallway. I was going to wait till we got to the yard. But I figured I can get away with this shit because police was all the way down there. The police that had our house, he was all the way in the front. But they was asking dudes that the house that was for us for the ID card. And, and I ain't going to lie. I saw that. He must have thought that because he was like, yo, son, you want some bullshit? Like, that shit was over. And it was, but that shit kept replaying in my mind, yo, man. I was like, man, fuck that shit, man. I wasn't even Rob. I wasn't trying to let him. So he probably thought that shit was over with too, man. But I was like, I, it was a dude in front of me. I reached around and wham. Ah, oh, hold that. He turned around. He was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. The police is asking for ID cards because you got to show your ID card before you go to the yard. So he wasn't busting a move. But when police started getting close as dudes were showing it, he tried to throw a kick at me. I threw the ratchet. I'm thinking my son Rob picked it up. Rob ain't never picked that shit up, son. Word. I ended up at F block. F block was long term key block. E block was just regular key block back then. I went to the hearing. I ended up getting a year in a box for that shit. Word. But even before that, I went down there. I got into an incident with police when they jumped me. Kaksaki box? Woo. Kaksaki box was different. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you got to walk with your hands. Class behind your back and lean on the wall on this. They was fucking dudes up in there and I and I got jumped down there. Word. They fucked me up down there, man. Word, man. I ended up getting and uh uh saw on police charge and everything and they jumped me, but they was doing a lot of bullshit down there. Word, man. They 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 caught wreck on my shit when I was down there. But anyway, I got a year in the box. I remember calling son to the hearing, you know, to say that I didn't do it. And, you know, you got to tell a hearing officer when they, what you want to ask him. And then a hearing officer relay it to him. But you can hear everything he's saying over the phone. Did I cut you? No. Um. Did I cut you? No. It wasn't like no hearing what you got to say. Nothing. But he didn't cut me. And I'm like, like you know, you got to say something. You got to talk like convincingly. The hearing officer asked me, yo, you got anything else you want to ask him? I said the same thing. No. Come on, man. This shit is over with. They gave me a year in the box. I ended up going to Southport. I was next door to Blue Boy. Dead on road. There was a couple of cells down. Um, 
That's back when cat. That's back when Southport used to have fucking um calamities and rice once a month. That shit, people used to be looking forward to that shit. I know I was. But yeah, I did a year in a box for that shit, man. But that's a shooting that. That's one of the shootings that I deem as one that shouldn't have happened. Like, I went ahead and do that shit different in this day and time. It wouldn't even went that far, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, we live to grow. Everybody don't, but I do, I, you know, I, you know, I grow even to this day, I grow and I could tell you like a lot of shootings that happened in Kaksaki or period, a lot of shootings that I did personally, I can literally admit right here that 90% of them shits is about silly, but silly shit. He was just caught in his own. And this was one of them. This was indeed one of them. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you know, it, it didn't have to go that far. The soaps wasn't about nothing. We was all right. You know what I mean? Um, even him injecting himself into the conversation. That shit wasn't really about nothing. You know what I mean? But it went there. That was the mind state back then. Like, you violate, you get shot. Simple. You know what I mean? That was it. It, it was no great area. It was, you violate, shot. That's it. And I literally took that extremely serious. You know what I mean? And um, that's why when I recount them stories now, like, who, who knew that them stories would be content? Now, like, <laughs> YouTube wasn't even a thought back then, you know what I mean? And I ain't, somebody would have told me, you know, you're gonna be talking about this on TV. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Um, but this 2024, that was 1995, um, damn near 30 years ago. Um, I really sincerely, you know, I don't know what became of homie. You know what I'm saying? But I hope he's living a good life, man, because um he wasn't a bad guy. I wasn't either. But we was all caught up into this mind state where we just had to react on shit. You know what I mean? Same way how he reacted, you know, when I said what I said and he like, yo, Miss C, yo, please put me down for the yard. <laughs> she ended up putting him down too. That's crazy. That's how he got out of cell. But that was a reaction, a decision that he shouldn't have did. Because, like, at that time, Rob was talking me down. And I wasn't saying nothing at that time, bro. You know what I mean? And the way I reacted after that, I could have. That shit, especially when he came out and was like. But I was more concerned. Like, hold up. You trying to do that on the low. Or you just try to stab on me in the gate in front of everybody. You know what I mean? And me being caught up in that mind state was like, hold up. Nah. Nah. Oh, shit, that's me back there right now. Oh, Barclays series. Oh, yeah, like I was saying, rappers, tap into the Barclay series. Go to Million Man Minded Music Group on YouTube, tap into the Barclay series. Get you one of these videos. Dead ass. Right now, my shit got the highest views, got the most views. I want somebody to outdo that. Real shit. I had the highest views for a minute. You know what I mean? And you got some official rappers up there, but I'm blast. So, but anyway, I'm gonna end this story talking that walk. Episode 13 is now concluded. Be on point for episode 14. Like I told y'all, I'm gonna stay off Rikers Island for a second. I'm just focusing on up north stories, and I got a lot of them shits. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna focus on up north stories because. The first eight, nine, no, ten episodes, with the exception of episode nine, is about Rikers Allen. You know what I mean? Episode 11, 12, and now 13 is about up north. You know what I mean? So, if you want to hear mostly Rikers Allen shit, which is crazy, go to the first ten episodes. But right now, I'm focusing on some up north shit. So, episode 14, I'm going to come up with 
another up north story. You know what I mean? I ain't going to forget about Rikers. We're going to still talk about that. You know what I mean? But right now, I'm just going to stack up some up north joints before I go back to the Rikers Island joints. Either way around, you're going to get the business. Talking that walk, this series about to be the new wave for jail stories because I'm going to start getting guests. You know what I'm saying? And all that. So, shit about to get crazy on this channel. So, subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification button. That way you'll be the first to hear shit as I drop it. You know what I mean? Tell a friend to tell a friend. T-Bone Blast. Brooklyn Approved. Tell the motherfuckers to tap in. And hear the real shit. Not this Fugazi other shit that you be hearing on YouTube. Real shit. You know what I mean? A motherfucker that talk about his wins and his losses. Though the losses is very few, but you got to keep it a buck. That's what I do. That's the difference between me and them. Salute.